So the other weekend at the London Craft Beer Festival, I was having a little chat with Matthew Callaby um, of Brewboy Callaby. Go and check the channel out if you haven't subbed to it already. Um, we were talking about pitching certain liquid yeasts and whether or not you need to make starters for them. So having come back from that and uh, having a pack of liquid yeast myself that I think needs a starter, I thought I'd do a little video about why certainly particular yeasts or, or brands of liquid yeast, I think it's really important to uh, pretty much always make a starter for those. And uh, in this video, I'll explain why. Okay, so first off, Despite the title of the video, I just want to start off by saying not all liquid yeasts have to um, have a starter made for them. This is more aimed at particular brands which are sold with a cell count of around 100 billion uh, yeast cells in the yeast packet when it's fully um, fresh and vital. So I couldn't make the title sort of, you know, concise enough to explain that basically, but. Um, certain yeast brands do have a much higher cell count and they also have shorter um, sell by dates on them as well which means that generally those particular brands will be okay to pitch directly quite often without a starter depending on what type of beer you're making, how strong it is and so on and so forth. So specifically brands like Imperial which I've done quite a few brews with on this channel and had really good results, uh, also Omega I believe, uh, possibly Giga yeast as well. Uh, sell their yeasts in packs where there are uh, basically double the cell count of what you get in um, the packs that come from people like Y Yeast and White Labs. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because Y Yeast and White Labs are probably the most widely distributed liquid yeast, and they both sell their yeast in these 100 billion cell packs. And essentially, if you follow the guidance and instructions which they provide, particularly if the yeast isn't in the best uh, condition or it's not as fresh as it could be, then there's quite a lot of potential for you running into trouble in terms of pitching rates and so on. So this video is just basically explaining um, how you can get around that by making a starter and why I would recommend um, pretty much always doing a starter with these yeasts, even if they are pretty fresh and you're quite confident that um, they are, you know, as close to the manufacturing date as they can be. So the best way to illustrate the sort of problems that might occur with regard to this is to look at the instructions on the back of this packet as an example and plug the numbers that come from that into a couple of sort of theoretical um, scenarios and see what sort of yeast count you might end up with and how that could potentially affect the beer. Now when we're talking about yeast counts and pitching rates there's no 100% guaranteed sort of way of measuring it unless you're actually properly, you know, counting them using microscopes and all that sort of stuff. So all this is very much um, based on guesstimates and rough calculations and so on. But that will still give you an idea of whether you're in the ballpark. So I'm certainly not saying that you have to hit a exact number or go above it, or your beer is going to be a disaster. In fact, sometimes you'll get away with quite low pitching rate, sometimes it will cause you lots of problems, sometimes you may um, you know, have a yeast that doesn't get going at all and uh, the beer is ruined, but um, essentially the, you know, the closer you are to the ideal pitching rate the better and the less likely you are to have issues with your beer for a variety of reasons. For example, if you have a very low pitching rate you might get a really long lag phase before the yeast really gets going in the beer and that may, might open the door for uh, infections to take hold so any other bacteria that's present might get going before the yeast kind of overpowers it. It may also mean that the yeast becomes stressed because it's trying to um, you know get going in um, more work than it can handle essentially so you may end up with off flavours that way too. Um, so you know we want to try and get the yeast as healthy as possible because as the saying goes brewers make Wort, yeast makes the beer, you need to keep the yeast happy. Um, it's pretty much, you know, one of the most important things that you can look at in terms of getting consistent brewing and making sure that your beer tastes really good. 
Anyway, so yeah, if we look at the packet on here, the things that are important to be aware of are, first of all, the cell count. So as I mentioned before, it's 100 billion cells. The instructions on here would indicate that with this packet, you should be able to direct pitch it into five gallons or 19 litres um, of well aerated or oxygenated wort up to 1060 OG um, at the temperature for this yeast, which is between 18 to 22 degrees. Um, high gravity or low temperature fermentations may require additional yeast. So as well as that, at the bottom it says for best results, store the activator smack pack between um, 34 to 40 Fahrenheit, one to four degrees Celsius, and use it within six months of the manufacture date. So this one was manufactured on uh, the 9th of May, 2019. It is currently the 14th of August. Um, and I did actually pop the activator in this pack and for once it's actually swelled up quite nicely. So the yeast appears to be reasonably vital in this, but let's plug some of those numbers into uh, the yeast calculator in Beersmith and I will show you um, what we come up with. Okay, so here we have the Beersmith starter calculator which I'm going to use to basically look at some of the numbers based on um, what we've got from the yeast packet there so this is a recipe that I'm actually going to be using this yeast for which is a fairly straightforward best bitter uh, it's quite low gravity so it's only about 1042 1043 now based on this kind of standard calculations for pitching rate uh, for a 19 litre batch we can see that Beersmith reckons you should have at least 152 billion cells. Now, straight away that number is a bit of a worry because you only have a maximum of 100 million cells in one of the yeast packets. So, best case scenario, we're under pitching by about a third of the required cells. Now, you may well get away with that. Uh, I'm sure loads of people have used these packs uh, direct pitching and at that sort of rate and it's not been a problem, but we know that we're already quite a bit under the ideal figure um, and that's assuming that the yeast is as fresh as it possibly can be and has got to us in the best condition that it can. Now we know that this pack is already a few months old so the software here allows us to punch in that date to give us a viability calculation which in this case uh, with I think what is it roughly three months old we're down to 44 percent viability so we only have a maximum of 44.8 billion cells left viable in the pack um, estimated of course uh, it may be a little healthier than that or even worse than that again we don't know exactly how it's been treated during transit between the supplier uh, the retailer and then on to us as well so it may well be less it may be better than that but as a ballpark figure we're down to less than half the original cells so relative to the ideal pitching rate we've got less than a third now of what we actually want which is definitely becoming a bit of concern and um, Beersmith is suggesting that we would want to pitch four packets at that age ideally to actually get a suitable amount of yeast which is obviously ludicrous we're not going to want to buy four packets of yeast for one 19 litre batch um, but it gives you an idea of how significant the kind of under pitch potentially could be and I would expect to see quite a bit of lag time there and possible issues down the line because of that maybe. Um, so that's in a fairly low gravity work. If we then looked at another example and this one I've basically gone with the sort of 1060 um, gravity which is quoted on the back of the packet so they say on the back you can pitch uh, direct pitch up to 1060 OG at 19 litres and we can see here the recommended cell count for that is over 200 billion so 209 billion so again even with the packet in its freshest possible condition um, we're nowhere near that with less than half of the recommended pitching rate so essentially what I'm getting at is pretty much all the time you're going to be under pitching with these yeasts if you direct pitch with them which is one of the reasons I think for Y yeast and White Labs yeast it's always a good idea to make a starter no matter what the um, what the date is on the pack. Um, let's 
make it even worse. So let's uh, assume that this packet was actually quite close to what they recommend as the um, sort of best before effectively. So six months would be May, April, March, February. Yeah, so let's change that to February and see what we've got. So now we're down to potentially 22% viability, 22 billion cells. So we're almost at a tenth of the required pitching rate, which, yeah, if you were going to try doing that into a direct pitch at 1060, I think that's not going to work out well for you. Um, so the instructions on these packets are optimistic at best. Um, a lot of people would say misleading at worst. And, you know, I don't have any issue with the yeast themselves. I think Y yeast and White Labs do some fantastic yeast. And I would recommend that people do explore using liquid yeast for, for sure. But I also think that these guys are not doing themselves any favours by basically giving people instructions which can potentially completely fuck up a batch of beer for them and lead them to think that liquid yeasts are more of a pain in the ass than they're worth and maybe you know not as reliable as um, dry yeast which is not the case if they're treated correctly and you try and aim for a suitable pitching rate um, they are certainly more effort than dry yeast but uh, you can have equal if not better results uh, with liquid yeast mainly down to the amount of choice that you have with the different varieties so yeah that wouldn't work out particularly well um, let's go back to the beer that I'm actually using it in and then look at what sort of starter size we would need so this needs 152 billion cells and if we are using a stir plate so on Beersmith if we click the little box here it will give you a recommended starter size for a one stage starter which is about uh, almost exactly three quarters of a litre starter size um, at 1036 gravity. So we just need to make a starter wort up, um, boil and sterilise that and then stick it on the stir plate, pitch the yeast in and give it a few days or a couple of days to generate that extra yeast growth, which is what I will do. call me you know uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino